Have you ever looked at a raisin and wondered, could this ever be a grape again? It's the stuff of science fiction and fantasy, raising the dead. And like many before me, I decided to defy nature and use science to attempt the impossible. You know, except it's with a grape. I decided to start simple. Raisins are basically just grapes with water removed, so all I needed to do was to put the water back in it. It seemed simple enough. Get a syringe, fill it with water, and inject the raisin. Easy. Except the raisins did not seem very interested in the water. And to be honest, I don't blame them. Even though I drink close to a gallon of water a day, I never chug it. I just keep a water bottle nearby and take a swig now and then. I need to let the raisins take in the water at their own pace, instead of mine. And I realized that I needed to figure out the best method of reintroducing water back into these desiccated husks. So I tested four methods. The first was soaking. Easy enough. It's literally just throwing the raisins into water and letting osmosis do its thing. My theory was that the natural sugar would help pull water into the raisin. And it worked pretty well. The only problem is that this took a long time two days to get any real results. I'm impatient and didn't like waiting, so I decided to speed things up for the other methods. Heat makes water molecules move faster, so I figured it would speed up osmosis and give me a bit of a shortcut. Boiling was the quickest and easiest option. By the way, you know that saying a watch pot never boils? Well, it's a lie. My only concern with the boiling water was that all the movement was damaging the raisins. I realized that the next method should be gentler, so I went with braising. Soaking the raisins in water, covering it with foil, and putting it in the oven. The surprising thing was that they still moved around a lot. Not nearly as much as the boiling water, but still way more than expected. I needed something that could heat the raisins in water without them moving. Luckily, I had the perfect tool, a sous vide. Normally, I use this for steak, but I figured it would work for raisins as well. And it did, just very slowly. 12 hours later, I was ready to compare the results of each method. The soaked ones turned out better than it first seemed. It just took them an extra day to get there. The boiled ones had the most consistent results. Nearly all of the raisins had grown to the same size, though some had been torn apart by the water. The braised ones tasted the best. They had partially caramelized during the process. The only problem was they seemed to lose a lot of their structure because of it. They were too soft and wouldn't absorb any extra water. Finally, as I expected, the sous vide ones were the best. They were not only larger on average, but they appeared to be holding water better than any other method. I decided to see if I could get a little more water in each method by using the syringe again, but I ran into a problem. Every single method eventually leaked before it could return to full size. The skin would always break. I needed to find a way to keep the water in. I needed to reinforce the raisin from the inside. My solution was to thicken the water somehow. At first I thought about using cornstarch, but that was too thick for the syringe. I needed something that would stay liquidy in the syringe and only thicken when it got into the raisin. I realized that the solution might be gelatin. I'm using the word gelatin because saying the phrase, I'm trying to put jello inside a raisin sounds ridiculous. Unlike what I'm doing, which is serious. Anyways, it's liquidy when it's hot and almost solid when it's cold. Even better, it comes in grape flavor, so I'd be making an even grapier grape. My first attempt was the raisin that had been sous vide. Sous vide? Sous vide? Whatever. Uh, the first ones were just in water and had the gelatin injected in. The result didn't seem to be any different other than it making these cool oily patterns in the water when it leaked out. So I tried the raisins that had been sous vuded in the gelatin in the hopes that they had absorbed some of it. Maybe the ice bath would harden it fast enough to make a difference. With every failure, I could feel myself getting a little bit closer. They were starting to look more like grapes than raisins. I felt like I was on the verge of success. The closest I ever got was when I was actively pumping more jello into a submerged raisin that had already started leaking. No matter what I tried, I couldn't make it work. I was pushing this method to its absolute limit. It wouldn't raise a grape from the dead. So I admitted defeat. 
I gave up on my aspirations of alcoholic grapes rehydrated with wine. I gave up on a charcuterie board overflowing with resurrected foods. I settled for a desiccated shadow of my dreams and accepted that these poor attempts were the best that I could hope to achieve. I threw in the towel and started editing. And that's when I saw it. The first clip of this video. A clip of light shining through a raisin. I realized that I had been looking in the wrong place this entire time. The answer wasn't to add water to a raisin. I had taken that strategy as far as it would go. Like Lazarus in his tomb, in order to be resurrected, the grape needed to be dead, gone. But most of all, it must be buried. With time, patience, and the right raisins, I could grow an entirely new plant. Turning a single raisin not into one grape, but dozens, maybe even hundreds. Researching it, this is the wrong time of the year for planting, and even then it would take over three months to sprout. And I wish I'd realized this before spending three hours driving around trying to find raisins with seeds. So, that's a story for another video. But when the time is right, the raisins will rise and become grapes once more.